Inter-Korean talks on reunions for war-torn families should have taken place today if Pyongyang responded positively to Seoul's proposal. As with the offer for military talks, no response from the North. But there's more to the silence than meets the eye. Hwan Jang-woo provides a thorough analysis. Tuesday was set by South Korea as the deadline for a round of talks with North Korea to discuss a possible reunion of separated families. But despite Seoul reaching out, there's been no response from Pyongyang. Instead, over the weekend, the regime test-fired its most powerful ever ballistic missile, one that could reach mainland U.S. Despite this affront, Seoul pledged to continue striving to engage with the North. We will respond strongly to North Korea's provocation, but there is no change to our dual-track policy of sanctions and dialogue. As a key player, we will be patient and persistent in our effort to denuclearize the Korean peninsula and achieve peace and security. There was some suggestion that North Korea's silence and missile test was a rejection of South Korean President Moon Jae-in's offer to hold talks. But some experts say the regime's behavior is not necessarily a bad sign. Normally, when North Korea rejects South Korea's offers, it does it directly. For example, if you look at the past two administrations, when North Korea had a grievance, it expressed it within two to three days. Pyongyang is not openly rejecting Seoul's offer, but it is showing that it wants to take things forward on its own terms. In light of the recent missile tests, there has been some calls for President Moon to take a tougher stance towards Pyongyang. But while it has been a concerning development, other observers have said it shouldn't change South Korea's attempts to engage with the North. An ICBM is a long-range ballistic missile, therefore it's aimed at pressuring the U.S. rather than South Korea. The launch was about sending a message to Washington rather than a rejection of Seoul's offer for talks. The disappointment and the lack of progress between the two Koreas would be most keenly felt by the 65,000 registered South Koreans who are waiting to take part in reunions of families separated by the Korean War 64 years ago. Already, more than half of the total number of registered war-torn family members have passed away over the years, and time is running out for those surviving. Kwon Jang-woo, Arirang News.